What's up everybody, Jason back again with another episode of Vendors, where I sit down and have casual one-on-one -on -one conversations with the leading wedding industry professionals to answer the questions that couples like you have all about your wedding planning process. Uh, today we're sitting down with Robert Nickpon of Robert J. Nickpon Productions and My Chicago Wedding DJs. Robert, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited about this. Likewise. Tell us who you are and what do you do? My name is Robert Nickpon. I am, I am a wedding DJ. Um, I also do lighting and decor for basically weddings and social events. As a DJ uh, company, do most DJs offer stuff like that, like, like the lighting and the decor? Um, most DJs do offer lighting, um, decor as well. Um, but what we do is we offer a little bit more. We do up lighting, uh, vine lighting, uh, Italian light strings, um, name and lights, etc. Oh, We're full cool. blown. We're full blown. So how many weddings do you think you've done over your career? Over my career? Well, I've been doing weddings since 1993. So this would be 26 wow. years of being in business. So do you, okay, you do not look old enough to be DJing in 93. Yeah. Uh, I started actually right out of high school. Um, that was my first gig while I was 18 years old, so if you do the math. Um, but yeah, I've roughly done about a thousand plus weddings uh, in my career. Okay, so this is not your first rodeo. You're not coming to me with like, I read a book once and I know how to DJ a wedding. No, no, not at all. So when a couple is looking for a DJ, um, first off, what are some good questions a couple can ask of their DJ? One, are they insured? Oh, That's a big one. Okay. That's a big one. Uh, you know, the last thing you want is by accident, a light falls on a guest, causes damage to either the venue or personal, you know, damage. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's always a good idea to have general liability insurance. Most professional DJs uh, that I've actually worked with do carry at least uh, one million to two million dollars general liability insurance right. for all events. That's super smart. What are some other things they, they should be asking? How long have you been doing this? How many you know weddings have you done? Um, how do you treat um, an unruly guest? Um, oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Touch on that a little bit. An unruly guest, uh, yeah, you know, maybe Uncle Bob is asking for a song that's not on the list. The bride or groom does not want it played. So we have to be very diplomatic the way we treat Uncle Bob and um, let them know that it wasn't on the list. However, we'll see if we can get to it later mm -hmm. to not you know, alienate him. But you know, just stuff like that. What are some of the, like, like, so when a couple comes to you and sits down with you, um, obviously they've probably seen the wedding wire and the not questions, like these are the 30 questions you have to ask your DJ. And yeah. I'm trying to get away from that because it's so yeah. archaic. Well, just so you know, all the 30 questions that you must ask your DJ, yeah. we already know the answers to them. Exactly. So it, it, it's almost a fluke to, to actually ask those questions that are already written down in the wedding wire or Donato or whatever. Mm -hmm. We already know the answers to that. We already know what you want to hear. Right. So um, the genuine questions really are the ones that you should be asking. What makes it more personal to you? What are, the what are some of the questions that you can ask a DJ that's personal to you? Like, do you come in a suit and tie? How do you come attired? Mm -hmm. um, do you, um, again, do you carry liability insurance? Mm -hmm. How many hours in advance do you come there? Uh, or in advance of the wedding? Mm, you know. What if somebody asks for a song that's inappropriate? How do you handle that? Uh, could, we, could we request no guest requests? Could we do guest requests but your discretion? These are things that are pretty important to a client. How far in advance should a couple be seeking out a DJ and booking with a DJ for their wedding? I would say as soon as possible. The moment you are engaged, that would be... Like that night? Fine. Not that night. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say shortly after, most wedding DJs or wedding professionals are pretty much booked in advance at least a year out. So. Most wedding uh, engagements happen around the holidays, around Thanksgiving, around Christmas time when the family gets together. And if they're planning a wedding that summer the following year, it's time to start looking for a wedding professional ASAP. Why that far in advance? Well, because all of the wedding professionals that are good, they're usually the ones that are booked first. So if you're looking for seamless planning, drama-free weddings, uh, working with professionals, uh, usually the good ones are booked first. So you brought up a really good point about working with a good vendor. 
Um, what makes the difference between a good vendor and someone who might be a little more amateur? A good vendor always start, starts off as an amateur. Right. But I think what's important is whether you have one year or 25 years as a DJ, I think the couple of things that you have to make sure is you are very customer service oriented. You're constantly communicating with your clients when they're, when they're communicating with you. You're answering all mail, emails. You're picking up the phone when they're calling. Uh, that would set aside even an amateur. Um, I've seen professional companies where you would call their 1-800 number and the guy answers, hello. That's not yeah, professional. I agree. Yeah. But what are some things that make a strong wedding DJ? I think customer service is key. Just yesterday, I was actually emailing with a client at midnight and he wrote back to me, I can't believe you're still up answering my questions. And I said, well, this is what we do. Right. Um, you know, we don't like to, uh, at least for me, wait for answers that are important for us to get answers to, mm -hmm. you know, questions answered rather. Um, so when a client asks me a question, I know it means something to them. It's important to them. So I try to get it back to them as soon as possible, just to ease the nerves a little bit. And I think when anyone's planning their wedding day, there's a lot of stress going into it and it takes a lot of time. So I think having those answers back right away is just yes. immensely important. Yeah. A week before a wedding, a DJ would contact our bride or groom and go over everything on the event timeline, making sure that you know the times are still correct, the first dance is still correct, um, touch on things that they may have inadvertently missed on the online planning forums. And we'll talk about that. If it was you know, accidentally or purposely omitted, uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, getting the last minute request changes. And then the day of, everybody knows what to expect. It's already been rehearsed. Right. So I think you bring up an awesome point there. You're not just showing up to play music. No. You're not just like, hey guys, I'm here, iPod, let's go. There's a ton more to it. Can you talk a little bit about what a DJ does before the wedding, like before the day even starts? Well, to be truthful, there's about 20 hours of planning that goes into a six hour wedding, to yeah. be honest with you. It's all of the consultations with the client, logging into the website, making sure everything is done properly. Mm -hmm. um, even like DJ education classes, you know, we go to a lot of conventions in Las Vegas to get up to date on up and coming trends, uh, what to do, what not to do. Uh, we also visit a lot of other venues to see what they're doing as well, just to make sure that we're uh, are ahead of the game. So you're constantly learning and constantly getting better. Yes, yes. Oh, okay, that's fantastic. When you're at the event, again, you're not just playing music, what else is important? What else do you do on the day of that most people actually don't think a DJ is like doing? What we do is we mind the client's time. We making, we're making sure that if their wedding is from six to midnight, we're adhering to a very strict timeline okay. because we don't wanna let it bleed out and next thing you know you've got only an hour's worth of dancing so right. we're very mindful of the time so a standard wedding would be six to midnight um, usually cocktail hour would be six to seven we're playing cocktail hour music uh, seven to like 8 30 would be dinner uh, which we would have speeches and and toasts and um, thank you speeches in, in that mm -hmm. time frame uh, but once dinner is done cake is out coffee's out we start with the first dances parents dances and any other specialty dances and we start dancing right away uh, you know we love to get the party started we don't like to let it drag out Absolutely. it's boring for the clients it's boring for their guests they're already right. there for a long time the last thing we want to do is be a part of the boring equation <laughs> so we uh, we want to get the party started what is like the most appropriate amount of dance time that's a good question. Um, we narrowed it down to about three to three and a half hours. Okay. Um, three to three and a half hours. It also includes a lot of slow songs, mm. a lot of Motown, uh, you know, hip hop. You know, that's later on in the in the evening, though. A little bit of dance music, but we try to play a wide variety of music to make sure everybody enjoys themselves. Right. Whether it be you know Uncle Bob, you know, who's in his sixties. Poor or Uncle 70s. Bob. He's just yeah. getting thrown under the bus today. Yeah. So we you know we try to cater for the older folks as well as the younger. Um, but yeah, that's essentially what we do. You also have a huge job as an MC because you have to control the evening. Uh, can you touch on that a little bit? Yes, and an MC is very important in terms of keeping the flow of the evening, um, such as having all the guests sit down because we're about to serve dinner, um, focusing attention on, say, the father of the groom wants to do a speech, uh, the thank you speeches from the bride and groom, uh, the best man, maid of honor speeches and toasts. Um, so those are very important. So we want to acknowledge uh, those events, making sure that everybody knows, hey, we're going to start this next, we're going to start that next. So there's not some silence in the right. room, what's going to happen next? Right. So we, as you said, quarterback the event, we usually tell 
uh, the, the clients, or I'm sorry, the guests rather, of, hey, we're gonna do this next. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Jason, our you know best man. <laughs> I don't like to put myself in the same category because I'm not, but I consider myself a day of coordinator uh, because you know a lot of times the bride and groom, they don't know what to do next. It's their first time right. uh, having a wedding, uh, at least 99% of my clients. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know they want somebody there that's going to help them move things along. Mm -hmm. um, the banquet captains usually do a pretty good job of getting the dinner out on time, but that's all they do. It's really up to the DJ to kind of keep the flow of the evening going yeah. in the right direction to make it fun. Can you touch on that, like where things may pop up that you have to deal with? Yeah, so unexpected things, believe it or not, happen more often than not. Um, I've tackled many unexpected things such as you know a microphone not working properly right before I'm supposed to make a speech uh, but luckily we have redundant systems so we'll just swap it out the day of or the, the moment of rather you did mention redundancy is that something that couples should be asking their DJs I think it's very important you know the day of we don't want to have something hold us back such as a five dollar cable yeah Right? It's, 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 I've seen it happen at other weddings that I was a guest at where a cable wasn't working out for a DJ or a band mm -hmm. and it was just a simple 5 or $10 cable. A good DJ or a good vendor in that case would always bring a redundant system such as extra speakers, extra cables, extra laptop, extra camera. Yeah, uh, it's right. important. You know, you know, as, as, as important as somebody's day is, such as a wedding, the last thing you want is for it to yeah. be ruined because a camera failed. So I think yeah. redundancy is really important. So here's something that I've seen over the years. It doesn't happen very often, but every once in a while a couple will reach out and um, find like a club DJ. Okay. And because they think a club DJ is the exact same thing as a wedding DJ. What are some differences that a wedding DJ can do versus a club DJ? So a wedding DJ is very versatile. He knows most genres from the 50s through today. He's a really good MC or she, very good MC. They know how to handle a wedding, mishaps, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, usually they'll bring out their own equipment uh, or they'll have a crew that brings out equipment for them. A club DJ on the other hand, he specializes or she specializes in one area of music or maybe a couple of areas of music. Uh, he or she does not have her, his or her own equipment, usually just a laptop, um, hardly any MC skills, and all they do is play music all night. So, you know, that, that's, a good that's my take. So if a couple's looking for a band or something, usually the old adage is go see the band live. Because you can see them on video, but eh, it's not, not the same thing as seeing a band live. What are some good ways that a couple can look out for a DJ and like, try and find them like that? Well, first I would start with like the knot, wedding wire, word of mouth, uh, maybe even visiting the banquet hall where they're gonna have their wedding and mm -hmm. say, hey, do you have a preferred vendor list? That'd be a good way to, to start. So you're doing all this work ahead of time. You said 20 hours of work before the wedding day. You're doing all the work the day of. You're doing the work of a DJ. You have all your gear. You have insurance. You have redundancy. How much does an average wedding DJ cost? So a good wedding DJ usually charges around 1400 bucks and up, pretty much. And so can you break down where that money is going? The money's going to training, going towards insurance for the vehicle, insurance for the equipment, purchasing of the equipment, maintaining the equipment, buying music, dry cleaning bills, gas, toll money, and website, uh, marketing, it's, it's, it's a lot. Oh, and time. And time. <laughs> time. Let's not forget to pay us. I love that that was like the very last thing on your mind. You can tell you're like a wedding vendor because like that's the last thing you're worried about. You're making sure everything is like totally handled with the client first. And you're like, oh yeah, I need to get paid so I can keep doing this. Yeah. We're living in an augmentator society. And what that means is we no longer praise the creative. We praise the words about the creative. I.e., if you go to Amazon, you're not just going to buy that first TV you see. You're going to hunt around and read the reviews. How important are reviews for wedding vendors? I think reviews are very important. It highlights previous experiences that other uh, couples have had with a vendor. Um, so, like you said, looking at a TV, great price, great, it fits me. Uh, let me see what everybody else is saying about the TV. Uh, I think it's really important that uh, clients are very educated as looking at their wedding vendors, making sure, hey, you know, sometimes the cheapest isn't always the best. Let's talk on that a little bit. The, the cheapest isn't always the best. I think when people, uh, when wedding couples start budgeting, 
they think of a number and then they start doing the research and then they understand that that number might be much lower because you probably never hired a DJ or you've never hired a wedding coordinator or a photographer. But can you talk a little bit about what a DJ brings to the value of a wedding day? value of a DJ, you're looking at reliability, mm -hmm. you're looking at customer service, you're looking to make sure he or she has all of your music, mm -hmm. understands your vision, because everybody's vision is very unique to them. Mm -hmm. uh, just because you know you heard the chicken dance at somebody else's wedding doesn't mean we're going to play it at your wedding. Um, so I think it's really important that when the clients meet with the DJs or other vendors, mm -hmm. they're asking very specific questions to make the experience very unique to them. That's super cool. What are some things that no one expects is part of your job that you have to deal with all the time? Well, first, what I do as a wedding DJ is I always meet with the videographer or the photographer, giving them my timeline so they know exactly what's going to happen to make sure they're in the room when it happens. Um, and the other thing is I do with videographers and photographers is I make sure to tell them, hey, if you're going to take a bathroom break or whatever, I'll find you, but I won't start anything without you because I want to preserve the client's memory that day. I love you. <laughs> what are some important aspects they should be look looking for while the interview is happening? So uh, I think having that personal connection with your vendor mm -hmm. is very important. You have to be able to like the person uh, because they are part of your special day. That's super true. And you don't want to look back on that day and be like, oh, glad we saved a little bit of money to look utterly miserable in all our photos. <laughs> so when a couple is booking with, with a DJ and they're looking through the contract, what are some things they should be aware of in that contract? Time, date, oh. and place. Oh, very important. Yeah, that would be very important. Um, and then secondly, I would think to just make sure that the price that's agreed on is, is the right amount. There's no surprise. It's making sure that everything that you've asked for is outlined in the contract, uh, such as DJ packages, lighting. Mm. If you're looking for a specific vendor or a specific DJ, make sure he or she is listed in your contract so there's no surprises the day of. So as we know, things can go wrong on a wedding day. What is your plan B if something goes wrong on your end? On my end? Well, first thing I do is I make sure we test everything before we leave our warehouse, mm. the main equipment and also the backup equipment. We also make sure we have every single song that they asked for on two separate computers. Uh, so that's very important as well. Um, so we do bring um, extra backup equipment. We also bring extra computers. We bring an extra tie. I've actually lost a tie once before, but I did have one in my band. That's uh, funny. It yeah. is, it is, it is. Uh, I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> It just, just gone. It just wedding disappeared. Numbers. It just disappeared. But uh, yeah, that would that would that would put me at ease as a wedding vendor, mm -hmm. letting my clients know they've got insurance as far as their DJ goes, making sure nothing happens the day of. Uh, how do you deal with multiple bookings? Multiple bookings. We love them. We personally, I have two DJs that work with me. Okay. Uh, so I usually like to let my staff go out first, unless I'm specifically asked for. I like mm. to let my guys go out first and make the money, uh, make the memories as well. Uh, but it's my brand, it's my name. If a client d did see me at a previous wedding and they want me specifically, mm -hmm. then I will take the booking. And if somebody calls me a month later and says, hey, we want you, you know, I'll let them know, hey, I'm personally not available. However, I got two guys that work with me that are just as good. They, they understand the vision and the core values of our company, and they will make sure that they do just as good of a job, you won't know the difference if it's me or them DJing for you. So we do know that weddings can be expensive and what it comes down to is what do you value for your wedding day when you're planning it? And everyone is looking for a deal. I think deal, no, no matter what you do in life, if I go to the grocery store and I find jalapenos are half off, I'm gonna make something with jalapenos. Um, what are some ways that a couple can find a deal finding a DJ? One of the things a client can ask a wedding DJ is, do you offer deals? Uh, a good wedding DJ would say, we do offer deals if you bundled certain things, mm -hmm. such as a photo booth, uplighting, name and lights, uh, Italian strings, stuff like that. Um, because we're already coming out the day of, we actually save money by not having to bring extra personnel, so you can get a little bit of a savings that way. Robert, thank you so much for coming out to sit down with us today and talk all about this. This has been a tremendous amount of help. I had a lot of fun being here. I did too. So if someone were so inclined to reach out to you, to pick your brain, to ask you questions, or to book with you, what's the best way they can reach you? I have two websites that you can go to. The first one is mychicagoweddingdj.com or my personal one, which is robertjnickpon.com, and you can contact me there. Fantastic. Are you on Instagram or Twitter? Or I am on Instagram, and you can reach me here. I love that. Just pop right there. 
Uh, again, thank you so much for coming out to sit with us today, and I hope we really helped enlighten some couples out there doing planning. I'm glad to be of service. Thank you so much. Thank you. We hope this episode of Vendors helps you on your wedding planning. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and to share to make sure you and your fellow planning couples don't miss a single episode. If you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to check out our entire conversation in the podcast. Be sure to check out all of our episodes about these amazing wedding industry professionals. We'll see you next time on Vendors. Vendors is produced and edited by Night Owls Media. More information can be found at nightowlsmedia.com.